Hello, sports fans and uh, baseball fans and Sportsman Z fans out there. Sportsman Z here with another video. And I had the, um, somebody made the recommendation that I do a, um, that I do a Q&A video where I answer questions that I've received over the past, you know, whatever time. And, uh, and, you know, and, and do a video to answer those questions. Specifically a question that he had, which I will also answer in this video. But it's, you know, not a, not a bad idea to uh, go through, let you know what some recent questions were that I received. And, um, and let you know how I feel on the subject. Before I get into that, though, two things. First thing is I want to say subscribe to the channel if you haven't, if you're sitting here watching this video and you think I've got interesting con content and you, you know, you can cruise around my channel and look at other things that I've put up. So, you know, subscribe and when the uh, video is over, leave a comment, um, give me a thumbs up, all that stuff helps. So I just want to let you know to do that. And the second thing I want to say before I get into the questions and answers is, um, I uh, want to I want to acknowledge the passing of uh, former Dodgers manager um, Tommy Lasorda. Sad to see him go, although he was in his 90s. So, I mean, the man had a good run. He had a good run as a manager, and he had a good run on this planet. So, you know, but it's still sad to see um, baseball icons like him pass away. Um, kind of reminds you of your own mortality and you know because we've all grown well all right some of us I mean there may be some youngsters out there watching who don't even know who Tommy Lasorda is but a lot of us have grown up with Tommy Lasorda and uh, as a manager of the Dodgers and whether you like the Dodgers or you don't like the Dodgers sad to see him go but um, you know rest in peace Tommy uh, you gave us a lot of good times. You gave baseball fans all over the world a lot of good times. So, I want to acknowledge that. But now let's get into the questions and answers. All right. The first question was from the the viewer that recommended that I uh, do a do a Q and A video, and his question was: Should I get a subscription to NHL.com? Basically, I, I'm assuming saying, um, you know, like watching the out of market NHL games uh, to watch games this year. I've only followed um, hockey loosely, but am thinking of uh, starting to follow it more closely. All right. Well, there's a lot of layers to this question. And so there's going to be some layers to my answer. The first answer I would give you is that if you've only followed hockey loosely up until now, I might hold off on getting an NHL.com or um, NHL.TV subscription until you're sure that you really want to follow hockey uh, a lot more, um, a lot more aggressively. Because there are local games, there's a Wednesday night, I think there's a Wednesday night rivalry game that the NHL has every year. I hope they still do that, but there's usually like a Wednesday night rivalry game um, on, on Wednesday nights. And they, they try to pit two rivals against each other. And in addition to that, you should be getting local games. Like, you know, I live in the Washington, D.C. area, so I, I get a lot of Washington Capitol games. So I guess the first part of my answer would be I would try that for a season. Watch your local games. Watch the nationally televised NBC games. Um and games maybe that are on ESPN or whatever. Um, also, if you have the, um, like in my cable package, I have the NHL Network. And NHL Network also televises games. So if you have any other way of anything that you're already paying for or, or something you already have that, will, um, t that you can watch games on, I would recommend doing that before I would sign up for an NHL.TV uh, or NHL.com or whatever you want to call it, uh, subscription. Because um, 
And I guess the second part of that answer is, you know, how much money do you have to spend? Because I've gotten, I've had the NHL.TV subscription in the past, and I have gotten my fair share of use out of it. But it's about a hundred, I want to say it's, I want to say it's like a hundred and eighty dollars or something like that for the season. So, you know, do you have the hundred and eighty dollars that you can spare? to watch, um, you know, to get the subscription. That's another consideration. And if you do have the $180, do you think you're going to get the $180 worth of watch time out of it? And again, that goes back to, you know, maybe try a season where you're just watching local games and games that you can get um, through means that you've already, that, you know, you already have or that you're already paying for. Um, because if you're if you haven't followed it in the past now i would say if you were a fanatical hockey fan and you just couldn't get enough of it then i would say yeah go ahead and get the nhl.tv because it's great it is nice to have you can watch all the out of market games that you want um and uh yeah so i mean i think the only restriction on that and someone can leave a comment, correct me if I'm wrong. The only two restrictions are, I don't think you can watch local games. Like I'm in the DC area, so I wouldn't get a net, I wouldn't get a hot, uh, Capitals game on NHL.TV because I'm local. And um, so that those games would be blacked out and I would have to watch them locally on the local channels. And I think the other restriction is nationally televised games. So. Hence, the Wednesday night um, rivalry matchup, may, you may not get that on uh, NHL.TV. However, that really should, none of those things should be an issue since, in theory, you would be able to watch them on your local networks. So, uh, so that's my answer to that question. Uh, another question I got, and, uh, it's, and it's a question I get repeatedly, so I really want to address this one is uh, who, where do I get the play mats or the mats or the boards that I use when I do my baseball and my football games? And um, like if you go back and you watch my Chicago Bears card and dice season, I had a nice big rubber play mat of a base or of a football um, field that I played my games on instead of a Stratomatic field. And, um, and if you watch my current um, card and dice round robin baseball tournament that I've got going on, you can see that I'm playing on a similar kind of play mat, only with a baseball diamond. And uh, those are through Inked Gaming, and I will provide a link to Inked Gaming below in the description so that you can click on that and uh, sign up if you want to, uh, you know, go into the website and get your own play mat. I think they're around $28. The ones that I've gotten are around $28. You can get different sizes. I'm not sure offhand which size mine is. They had a lot of choices, um, but I will, um, but anyway, it's, those are, are good, um, it's, it's, I like playing on those more than I do on the actual boards because they're bigger, they give you a lot more room, and they're very sturdy. They won't, um, you know, they won't, like the, the baseball cardboard, um, fields, after so much use, you're going to start to strip away the, you know, the ink and the whatever on the, on the, uh, field. Um, the football is kind of small. The football field's like attached to the timer and it's kind of small. So, um, so yeah, I, I like to get my own fields and just do that, um, do it that way. Um, and Inked Gaming is great. What you do is you basically, you go to the website, you find a, uh, and you find a, a field that you like, a football field image or a baseball field image or even a hockey rink field, uh, a hockey rink image that you like. And you can upload that to their website and they will make a play mat for you. And what it is, it's basically a rubber play mat. It's a thin rubber play mat. You can roll it up when you're done. You can fold it up. 
Another great thing about it is you can store it anywhere and do anything with it. Like I've had it sitting over cards and it's like up and down and, you know, and, and if you try to do that with something that's cardboard or thin cardboard, it's going to, it's going to warp the cardboard and, and bend it in permanently in a way that you can't get it unbent. It doesn't happen with these, with these play mats. They, they just adhere to the surface. Not really adhere, but they, um, they take the formation of the surface that they're on and then they go right back to like if you had it sitting over a bunch of stuff and it had you know um uh, hills and valleys in what it was sitting on but then you took it and immediately set it on a flat surface it would sit nice and perfectly flat that wouldn't happen with a cardboard uh field so so yeah inked gaming they're awesome like I said, about 28, the ones I get are about $28. And I have really, I have one baseball field and I have two football fields. In my last football season, I only used one field and I would um, tape like, uh, I would make the, uh, the icons of the, uh, you know, of the different teams sometimes and put it in the middle of the field. But I actually got myself a Chicago Bears one. And in my next season, I will have a Bears. It's going to be a Bears like draft team. It's not going to be the Bears, but I will have a Bears team. And every time the Bears play a home game, I've got the Bears field. And you can find those online anywhere. You know, you just just keep looking, find an image you like, save it to your computer and then go to Inked Gaming and upload it. And then, you know, and then go through the purchase process and they send it to you. Doesn't take very long. 28 bucks um so moving on along uh how do i feel about college athletes who choose to sit out um he said bowl games but i'm assuming he means minor bowl games because usually a college athlete's not going to sit out like the rose bowl or the sugar bowl or you know the national championship but like minor bowl games like the outback bowl and the uh you know whatever you know corporate bowl and um i don't think it's right he doesn't either and you know that's uh, we agree on that because the athletes have a i mean i know we're in a in a in a different time but you're still there playing probably on a scholarship where your education is free or it, a lot of it's paid for because you're on the football team. So if you're on a team because of a scholarship, you should play in any game that the team has to play unless you are sick or unable to play. But if you are not, you should be playing. That's, that's just how I think. And then finally, how do I, where do I stand on the DH rule? Um, this has kind of evolved over time. I think that my opinion of the DH rule is that both leagues should have it. Should Both leagues should have the DH rule. Not only does it provide more jobs for more guys that are aging, and that is always the argument, and that's why the players' union likes it. But nobody likes to see the pitcher bad. And I used to be in favor of um, no DH, because that's how baseball was originally made. You had nine guys in the field, the nine guys batted. And that's how the National League does it. But back in the day when the game was invented, I would assume back in the 1800s, the pitcher had as much chance of being a good hitter or a better hitter than someone else on the team, an outfielder or a first baseman or a catcher. You know, the odds were were 50-50, at least, that he was going to be a better hitter than some other guys on the team. Today, that's not the case. The pitchers are never good hitters, or rarely, rarely. You've got guys like Bumgarner that can hit, can hit home runs. But, um, and, uh, you know, and, and DeGrom, I think, can hit a little bit, and so can Scherzer. But it's, uh, it's rare nowadays. It's very rare that you have uh, pitchers that can hit. So when they come up, they're an automatic out. Nobody wants to see that. The worst thing that could happen is you have two outs and your team, you know, your team has two outs. There's runners at second and third 
and the pitcher comes up and it's in the third inning and he's pitching well. He's pitching, there's no, you know, no issues with his pitching. He's going to hit and he has to try to get a hit. And if he gets out, that's the end of the inning and you had two guys, you could have scored two runs. You'd rather see a DH, even a bad DH, even a guy that hits 228. You would rather see up in that spot than the pitcher. So that's how I feel on it. I think both teams, both leagues should go to it. And I think both leagues are going to go to it eventually. They apparently aren't going to do it this year where I thought they would, but eventually it's going to happen. The players union is going to push for it and it's going to happen. So that is my Q and A video. Uh, let me know what you thought of the answers. Remember to leave a comment below, give me a thumbs up. But for right now, that's it for me, Sportsman Z, signing off.